This video is called Five Poses to Headstand. Five Poses to Headstand. This is kind of a fun game that yogis play. It's kind of like Name That Tune. I can name that tune in six notes. I can name that tune in three notes. This is, I can get to Headstand in five poses. Why would you want to do that? Gosh, Headstand is an amazing pose. Really, if there's only one pose you could do every day, Headstand would be a really excellent choice. If you have a copy of BKS Iyengar's book, Light on Yoga, anywhere at home, check out the section on Headstand. It's two, three, maybe four pages long. And in it, Iyengar says that Headstand is good for curing or preventing just about any illness or condition that you can think of. In addition to that, Headstand helps you feel grounded, helps you feel connected to the earth, and gives you a chance to invert, which is to go upside down, which just shifts your whole perspective on your day. Shifts the blood and the breath around in your brain and leaves you feeling really invigorated. So, worthwhile pose. And we're gonna to try to get there in five good poses. Now that means these can't be five lazy poses. They're gonna to have to be really checked in for you to be open enough and strong enough to be able to push up into a headstand here when we're done. So, five poses, here we go. We're gonna start with Tadasana. So stand with your feet hip-width apart. Root down through the floor. Inhale, stretch your side bodies long. And draw your shoulder blades under your back. Shoulders are a huge part of headstand, so we're gonna focus mostly on opening those. Interlace your fingertips behind your back. Broaden through the top of your chest, through your collarbones. Keep drawing your shoulder blades onto your back. If you're not sure what that looks like, you're squeezing the shoulder blades toward the midline, opening your shoulders. And then you're going to bow over Uttanasana. Keep the clasp. Lengthen your side bodies. Your hands can come way over your head, letting the heads of your arm bones head toward your but then draw them back under your back using your shoulder blades. Then release again. Let your hands come as far, as far over your head as you can. And then hug onto the back again. Release again. And just work here. Finding space, finding clarity and motion in your shoulder blades. And then exhale. Take your fingertips to the floor. Then to your hips, root your feet down, inhale, rise up. I'm counting down to number one. So here's number two, crescent warrior, step your right foot forward, left foot back, squeeze in, inhale, stretch your arms up. And then keeping your legs strong, take your arms down to cactus, from your elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back, root your tailbone down and start to curl gently from your upper back. As you do this, be mindful of your neck. Your neck is part of your back too. It's the extension of your spine. Stretch long through your neck. Start to take your head and pal it back. Then stretch your arms up. Exhale, come down and change sides. Step your left foot forward, right foot back. Crescent warrior. Hug in. Open to grace. Take your elbows down to the sides from your elbows, draw onto your back. And just start to open yourself up. Like you're using the power of your legs and your shoulder blades as keys to unlock your heart. Head strong, neck in line with your spine, stretch well through your hands. Good, exhale and come forward. Pose number three, downward facing dog. If it's going to count as one of the five, it needs to be good. Not a resting dog, but an active, working dog. Bend your elbows out to the sides. Keeping your fingertips planted from your elbows, draw your shoulders on your back and straighten your arms. Hug your forearms toward each other. And again, be mindful of your neck. It's not so relaxed that you're down here, or so gripped that you're up here. Your ears can be between your upper arms. Neck stretching long, throat long, as 
Now you're reaching out the crown of your head just like you reach through your hands. And then inhale, come forward to plank pose. Pose number four, shoulders right over your wrists. Arms hugging and strong, belly strong, and then within the support of your arms, soften your heart down. Let the bottom tips of your shoulder blades start to come together, even as you squeeze your forearms in and root down through your tailbone. One more breath, lengthen through your neck. Exhale, come on down to your knees. So that was four, we've got one more. The last prep pose we're gonna do is called Pinch Mayarasana Prep. Pinch Mayarasana is a forearm stand where your forearms are on the floor like this and you kick your legs up into an inverted position. We're just gonna do the prep pose because this prep pose does a lot of work with your shoulders and upper back opening and strengthening to support the inverted position, which is exactly what happens in the headstand. So in this pose, you're gonna take your forearms and make them parallel to each other. So elbows, forearms, wrists, all parallel, shoulder width apart, and take that whole thing, plant your forearms down on the floor, and just practice for softening into that support you've created. So take a deep breath in, and soften between your shoulder blades and melt. Good, practice that again. Inhale. Side bodies on full breath. Exhale, soften between your shoulder blades. Good. And notice my upper arms are just slightly ahead or right over my elbows. They're not back here, they're way up here. Keeping that now, tuck your toes under. Inhale, take a deep breath and lengthen your side bodies. Soften your heart and then draw your tailbone down, belly up and in as an outer spiral instruction, and then straighten your legs to come to downward facing dog legs. Now, some of you might be tempted to go back here when that happens. Don't do that. Keep your weight forward, shoulders right over your elbows, and then soften again. Good, you might want to walk in a little further. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, soften. Keep breathing. This is hard. There's a lot of stuff in your shoulders that needs to be cleared. Exhale, release, bend your knees, and come on down to the floor. Whew, you should feel that. Those actions that we just did are really crucial for headstand. Headstand is on your head, yes, about a third of the weight is on your head and neck. But then another third is on your left arm, another third is on your right arm, in Shirshasana 1. In order to support that weight, you really need to use your shoulder blades, your shoulder girdle. So here's what we're going to do. I need to walk my mat away from the wall just a bit here. And I'm going to plant my tripod, interlace my fingertips. This is my tripod here. Same width apart as pinch my rasa with hands clasped. Take that tripod, place it down on the floor. In the middle of that tripod, I'm going to rest my head. Now, where on my head? Always a question. Somewhere between the front and the very top. If you have a fairly curvy neck, I have a fairly curvy neck, you can see the curve in my neck, you can go more to the top of your head. If you're a flat neck person, flat neck people tend to look a little more like this, kind of straight up and down here, you're going to want to err toward the front. Whatever you do, do not go anywhere behind this spot or this pose. Rather than curing all those ailments that Iyengar mentions in the book, is actually going to do worse things. And it'll very much hurt your neck. So, between the front and the top. So, I've done this pose a bunch. I have a pretty good idea of where I want to be. If you're newer, you might have to experiment. I'm going to place my hands, place my wrists, root down, and now I'll place my head. Then, before I go anywhere, I want to integrate my shoulder blades. So from my shoulder blades, I'm going to draw in, melt my heart, and then I'm ready to come up onto my toes and walk in. Now my shoulders might come off my back like this. If that happens, I'm going to pause and reintegrate like that. 
from my elbows, I draw my shoulders in toward my spine, integrate them, and then I walk forward, keep walking forward, and I might be able to push right up like this. And here I am in Shirshasana 1, headstand. Now, if you can't balance in the middle of the room, no problem. It takes a little practice to be able to do that. You're just going to take your mat to the wall and do the same thing at the wall. So I'm just going to shimmy my mat over here. Same tripod, same placement, but you're going to use the wall for balance initially. Plant my hands, plant my elbows, plant my forearms. Strong into the floor. Then, I'm going to take my head down, find that perfect spot for me that's going to support my neck. Then from my elbows, I'm going to root my shoulder blades in. I'm going to step straight and start to walk in. Again, if I collapse, I need to hug back in, shoulders on my back, engage. Good. Then, what people find the easiest here is to just take one leg to the wall and then the other leg to the wall. Stop, reassess, power my shoulders, root them in toward my back, make them strong, press through the very top of my head, good, then one leg up, other leg up, and here I am, Shishasana 1. Now, if you're still good hanging out here, take one leg away, then take the other leg away, and balance. When you're ready to come down, you can bend both knees, and then step one leg down, and then the other leg down. Take your knees down on the floor. I like to take my hands out to each side of my head, let my forehead rest on the floor, and keep shrugging my shoulder blades in. It's a nice release. And then I'm going to slowly press myself up. And enjoy the after effect of this pose, which is pretty nice. In the ideal world, five minutes in headstand is recommended. Now, when you're newer, that's clearly not a possibility, so start with whatever you can do. Five seconds in headstand, 30 seconds in headstand, work up to a minute, and then maybe over time, five minutes becomes accessible. But the longer you stay, the greater the potency of the effects of this pose on your overall health. So keep practicing it. Let me know how it goes.